boys i'm on the east coast <laughs> welcome back right yeah it's yeah. cool i have no is idea it? dude i have no idea what time it is but i'm in orlando and it's very hot and humid here another thing that i am not used to and uh yeah. i have a question for you guys that i've you know found out through i've thought about through my travels um is there anything that you can think of that you are allowed to do but like you shouldn't be allowed to do that here's what made me think of this i'm okay. on the plane <laughs> and i'm sitting in the exit row and apparently on american airlines the exit row is now like first class where you get free drinks in the row and all i could think about was why do they let you drink in the exit row? They make such a big deal about the exit row. They like, make, you can't have your headphones in. You got to make sure you pay attention to them. You got to be over 13, like all this other stuff. Can't sit there with kids. Like, why are you allowed to drink if the exit row is so important? I don't think you should be allowed to do that. That's a great question. A great point. Yeah. Cause they're like, are you willing and able to do this, 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 in the event of an emergency, you have to like give a verbal yes, but Hey, while you're here, throw a couple back. It's fine. <laughs> Relax. We got a long flight. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I don't even know. Like my mind is going <laughs> in all directions. Like, I mean, there's a lot of things. I could do that. I should, you know, like, I don't think we need to go down all those paths. Um, I don't know, Dan, do you have anything? Without getting too deep into the woods, I think there are certain people that shouldn't be allowed to wear certain types of clothing in public. <laughs> I'll, I'll let your minds wander where they may, but I feel like, you know, that privilege should be earned maybe a little bit more. That's all I'll say. Summertime, you know, clothes are short and light and shouldn't always be. That's, that's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure there are many more good ones. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with this one because it just like graced my feed uh, uh, on, on social media. I just don't think people should be allowed to post on any topic. Like, I don't think, I don't think we should have that kind of freedom of speech. If I'm being honest with you guys, I don't think it should be allowed. Like, and, and, and I mean, that could apply to a lot of serious things. <laughs> the things that piss me off the most is like these schmucks that take their iPhone into the grocery store and like find ketchup and tell you how it's poison. Like go to hell. Like go straight to hell because you get, and then like those things blow the hell up because people think like this guy knows that high fructose corn syrup is going to like give you cancer. Go to hell. Oh my God. We should not every, you should have to like, why you have to pass a test to drive a car, but you don't have to do any type of like screening to post to literally millions of people. It's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. You have to wait until you're 21 to drink alcohol technically, but like at 12, you can go into giant Eagle and get a 5 million viewed video on TikTok because you say that ground beef is processed and poison and is going to kill you. Like, come on. What are we doing? People should not, you should not be able to post about whatever you want to post on social media. You shouldn't be able to. I'm, I'm obsessed with that. Uh, <laughs> what, another thing that is, you guys have brought to my attention, people who FaceTime in public. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like <laughs> you will not believe how many people I see FaceTiming in the grocery store. Just like, oh, honey, um, I don't know which bananas to get. Like, which wh which ones do I get? Dumb, like, dummy, I just want to, every time I see that, I just want to, like, grab the phone and be like, why'd you marry this guy? Why, <laughs> why did you marry somebody who can't pick out the right bananas? Who can't pick out the right tomatoes? Or whatever. Or just people FaceTiming their friends out in, like, just 
somewhere. I think FaceTiming in public it should be banned like cigarettes. Like, like if someone yes. tries to open up a smoke at a restaurant, they're like, whoa, <laughs> the hell are you yeah. doing right now? That's yeah. what I want people to do when they see people FaceTiming in public. Is that like, like a jewel and a FaceTime? No, no, that's two. You're out. Sorry. <laughs> oh, do you want me to call the police, sir? Um, <laughs> And, and what makes me even more mad about FaceTiming in public is when people are on FaceTime and they don't even have, they're not even using the camera. They just like put it down. They take the phone and like put it down on the table and are talking to somebody on FaceTime. And the person that you're talking to is seeing your ceiling fan go around and yeah. around. Like if you're going to be obnoxious, at least respect the person you're talking to. You're disrespecting all of us by doing it. But like show your face. That makes me mad. Yeah. Or they just like, they're holding it by their face so it's literally just this <laughs> it's like your side of your face and your eyeball to the person and they're both doing it it's like why are you wasting this technology put it up to your ear like a normal person boy did you open a can of worms here <laughs> i know i didn't know it was gonna get this deep but my god now i have a million things in my head we're gonna have to like revisit this topic That's yeah. what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to yeah. stick a pen in this one revisit it yeah. what's up it's the brunch breakdown it's dd out here in uh orlando Chris and Dan are in Pittsburgh, and today on the show, we've got a lot to talk about. We're going to be talking uh, movies that need restaurants themed after them. Bubba Gum Shrimp shouldn't be the only one. Uh, we're going to do some brunch court, and we've got Heinz Field to talk about. Or you guys are going to have to tell me later how to ex how to say the new name of Heinz Field, because <laughs> I honestly don't know. <laughs> so anyways, uh, let's start the brunch breakdown. Dan, tell everybody where they can find us. They can find us anywhere. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can find The Brunch Breakdown. Hit follow, hit subscribe. Let the episodes come to you each and every Wednesday. New episodes get released everywhere podcasts are available. We have full video episodes available every Wednesday as well. Those debut on our YouTube page and our Facebook page at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, available on demand anytime you want to watch after that. And, of course, we're set everywhere on social media as well. Follow us. And we follow you back. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Triller, TikTok, all the above at Brunch Breakdown. And don't forget the Double Stuffed Sounds of Brunch playlist exclusively on Sp Spotify updated each and every Friday. Not only do we have the most current week list playlist of things, what we're listening to, but the previous week as well will also be there for your listening, enjoyment, and pleasure in case you need to do a little bit of catch up. So check that out, Sounds of Brunch, exclusively on Spotify. Beautiful. Full. All right. Well, let's uh, get random topics off our chest. Chris, go for it, man. What's on your mind? Uh, since we're talking restaurants later, this happened just at, at the right time. Uh, my wife and our, our two daughters, we went out to get dinner. Uh, when, when was it? Last Friday. And I experienced something that's actually like a scene in a movie that I've watched and I just like couldn't believe it actually happened. But we were in a booth and on the other side of us was another booth booth where there were these two ladies. They like just, they were done with work. They came here to get drinks and like have dinner. And the, the one lady had a complaint about her meal, but she ate the entire meal before she complained about it. And like, fam, <laughs> That's not how this shit works, okay? There is a scene in the movie Waiting where, like, it's a joke. They call the manager, and the manager comes over and says, like, well, did you have to eat the whole steak before you complained about it? Like, <laughs> you can't do that. But somehow, this lady got the people at the restaurant to, like, cook her another meal, which she got to take home with her for free. And, like, it was a Mexican restaurant, so, like, the waiter that she was talking to like, I felt so bad for him because he didn't, he, he, he spoke English, but you could tell it wasn't his first language. Like he, he wasn't, the, the conversation wasn't going well, partly because he didn't really know how to have a full on conversation with this lady. And she was like such a dick to this guy. And just like people, th the point of this is number one, don't do that. You can't do that. Although it does sound like you can, and maybe she's like some type of secret ops, like two meals for one uh, ninja, but like, be nice to your waiters. Okay. I understand like sometimes orders get screwed up and stuff like that. And like, there's a way to address it. It's normally the minute you notice it's the wrong thing and just try to be polite. 
with your waiters, waitresses, managers, because like those jobs aren't fun. I, I, th those are not like those people. That's not what they want to be doing. Okay. You're there. That's what you want to be doing. That's not what they want to be doing. So be nice to your servers. And also like, <laughs> don't eat the whole thing. Cause that's ridiculous. That's all. Put that on the list of things you should not be allowed to do. <laughs> yeah. Eat an entire meal and then complain about it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. That is definitely under the category of you are allowed to do this, but you shouldn't be. Yeah. Like, what? Oh, that's insane. That's just infuriating. I mean, because, yeah, like, what are you going to do at that point? Are you, is that what you're going to say? You're going to call it that? Well, ma'am, you ate the whole thing. Because if she's already being a dick, then you know that's just going to light a whole other fire you don't want to be a part of. Yeah, they didn't bring that up, and I really wanted them to. But, like, her her gripe was that she said she ordered steak, and what they gave her was ground beef. And she's like, I thought it was weird because it was flat. It was, like, flatter than it should have been. But I just decided to eat it anyway. But, like, that definitely wasn't steak. It's like, come on, man. Come on. Like, those are clearly obviously two very different things the only similar thing is like they're kind of the same color but yeah that's ridiculous wow steak and beef and she ate the whole thing and then got steak to go home <laughs> yeah. i wow dan get it off your chest uh mine's gonna be kind of short and simple today boys and don't ask why this is bothering me but it just happened to see it too visually too often uh the solo mustache has to go it's got to go it's disgusting it, it does like these throwback style of clothes and etc fine it's uh, down with it fine uh like the solo mustache can work on some people S some people but it, 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 it for the majority of you out there trying to pull this off it, it doesn't work it, it, it's gross you look like a creeper um, like we have grown men looking like teenage boys from the 1970s. Like that can't be attractive to anybody, male, female. No, nobody, nobody can be like, Oh, let me get a piece of that caterpillar. Like, <laughs> no. And you want to do it in November for awareness and all that fine support that totally go with it. But as a regular style, whether you're a teenager or you're 45, I've seen it across the board. Just please stop this madness of this quote unquote trendy style just grow the beard or shave the whole thing off do the goatee something else the solo mustache with these throwback clothes it's just it's disgusting please stop it <laughs> that's it how to get that off my chest yeah we're in like this uh like they say like fashion is cyclical right like it all just keeps right. coming back around and i think we've like we've clearly over the last few years ventured our way back into like the eighties in that we're wearing some of the weirdest shit I've ever seen. And like styles are, are definitely a lot stranger, but I also like recognize that my favorite era of fashion looking back is now like the baggy pants generation was weird too. Uh, but I'm with you, Dan. I don't think like, I don't think that the, the mustache I don't think it works for like the vast majority of guys that do it. But I think the reason most guys do it is because it looks weird. And we're in an era of fashion where like weird is in. And so it's, yeah. it's, it's the weird time. It's a weird time. Yeah. It's a weird time. Cause <laughs> like gap literally has cargo shorts, just sitting like it's out there, out there. <laughs> like those are in the short, Ugh. the regular ass short section. Not in a special section. They're just out there. Like, these are something people are going to pick up and buy. And I just uh, have a problem with that. Let's yeah. press stop to this, people. Please, please don't follow all the trends. <laughs> all right. Mine is uh, pretty short. Um, I was, I don't know why I've been jamming so much listening to airport music, but shouts to the airports for just all of a sudden just blasting really good music these days. And I thought about, <laughs> and I thought about our topic we had like some months ago about which song by a girl that you sing with your whole chest. And I know one that was not on my list. Dancing on my own by Robin was playing in the airport. And, I, 
I promise you that I was just freaking in the corner watching you kiss her. Oh, like honestly on the escalator, like not paying attention to anything around me. And I'm like in the packed, like Las Vegas airport, just singing my just head off. Just, oh my God, dude. Like Dancing on My Own by Robin. It's going on the playlist this week. Might have to stay there forever. But yeah, just wow. add that to the list of songs you sing with your whole chest. That's wow. our new Jordan Sparks. Hey, if she doesn't get the cameo back up and running, I'm gonna have to hit up Robin instead. You know, <laughs> somebody's gonna show somebody's gonna show the love of the brunch breakdown. Well, you don't hear that very often nowadays. You know, shouts to airports. You don't that not a lot of people coming out saying that. <laughs> It's usually really, really negative. Now, you know what? Shots to airports. All Dude. right. Whoever's back there in the control room throwing on the, the shuffle in the playlist is uh, it's hitting you, right? It's hitting you in the right spot. Yeah. They're making people stay there longer these days. So they might as well up the playlist. So they well, got special Whoever's DJs. working there needs to start working at grocery stores because we've talked about grocery store music, grocery store music festival before. We've done for years, we've talked about this. And those people, those people need to change because that yeah. that is it's terrible now they clearly want you out of there as quick as possible they don't want you worrying about how expensive stuff is it's get in get out of here we go to the grocery store and we're like oh this is so bad i've got to get out of here why is it always edwin mccain why is edwin mccain i'll be <laughs> that's all every time i walk into the grocery store now nah, i'll be every yep. single time yep Dude, every time for it's me, it's Gavin question. DeGraw. Every time Gavin DeGraw. <laughs> I hear one Gavin DeGraw Joe song Crow. every time I'm in the grocery store. Yeah. Cheryl Crow. They're just the it's just the same group of trash. Now that's what it should be. Now that's what I call grocery music, volume one. And it's just it's those just same yeah. artists. They never went to volume <laughs> two. <laughs> TM, 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 TM. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, now that we got those great topics off of our <laughs> chest, let's uh, open up some brews, guys. Uh, what are you sipping on, Chris? We got. Uh, I'll go quick because I'm just having another one of these crush worthies from Great Lakes. This time it is the watermelon. I believe last week I did the grapefruit, but um, mm-hmm. once again, thank you to good friend and listener of the podcast, Ryan Johnson, for saving my alcohol. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, it's the watermelon because that's uh, not a typical beer flavor. And I've heard good things, but I haven't had a chance to try it yet. Yeah, this was honestly the first sip I've ever had of it. Ooh, live. Here we go. Yeah, it's good. You know what? It's interesting. It, like, I don't, it tastes good. It tastes sweet. I don't know that like I get like a, I get like a sweet taste to it, but I, I don't know that it's overly watermelon y. It's yeah. just kind of a little bit sweeter. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Curious about that. Watermelon. Yeah, not an off, not a flavor you see in beer very often. So it'll be tough to make happen. All right. Well, boys, uh, I got a truly strawberry hibiscus margarita. This Ooh. is the best flavor of truly in the world. And shouts to Dan's wife, Shannon, because me and her cr- probably crushed a case and a half of these at Coachella this year. So in between oh, yeah. Shannon not feeling well, we somehow managed to crush a bunch of these <laughs> at Coachella. And when I had bought <laughs> this, I thought of her. So um, yeah, so shouts to your wife, Shannon, and shouts to this being the Truly Margarita. The whole pack is amazing. So shouts to Truly. I'm with you, man. I Again, I've preached that I don't like seltzers, but that's one I get down with. I get down with that one. So that's a good choice. Um, I'm keeping it kind of simple today too, boys, because we're not going to get into the means of traffic in the city of Pittsburgh, but that's another thing you shouldn't be allowed to do, which I've gone over before. If you work from home, stay off the road until I'm home. Okay. It shouldn't take me 20 minutes to get home longer than it takes does to get to work 20 minutes. So we were in a little rush to start. So I grabbed the beer, wonderful beer. Can't go wrong. Haven't had this one on the podcast before, but everybody's had it. Southern tier. 2X, the two times IPA, it's bold, it's fruity, it's beautiful. A little higher ABV because you know what? I'm working from home tomorrow and I'll stay off the road and I need this after rushing home, taking 20 minutes to get home longer than it should have been. So good Samaritan you are. Yeah, I need this for more than one reason right now. (laughs) 
Oh, well, cheers, boys. Cheers. Cheers, indeed. Cheers. All right. Okay. Well, mm. let's get into the main menu. Um, first thing, big news in Pittsburgh. Um, pseudo sad news, I guess. Heinz Field is no more. It is now what stadium? A- Akrashore. Is that how it's pronounced? Akrashore. That's what I hear. Akrashore. I was hoping it was like Akrasher. I, per- <laughs> I specifically didn't look this up because I wanted you guys to say it to me. But I was really hoping it was like Akrasure or like a creature. A creature stadium. A creature. A creature. A, a creature stadium. A creature. Yeah. And what is that again? What is this company? Anyone know? They're from Somebody? Michigan. I, I don't they're, even know. They're a Michigan based insurance company. Yeah. And so, like, for anybody listening that's not from Pittsburgh, I think people in Pittsburgh are getting real worried that something bad is going to happen because the Penguins got bought by a ownership group out of Boston. Now the Steelers stadium is getting renamed by some insurance thing in Michigan. Like I I think what's next, they just sell the city to Los Angeles and we become like a new neighborhood of Los Angeles. I don't know. People are worried. (laughs) People are worried here. People are getting very, very worried. And like, how how are drunk Yinzers supposed to pronounce this sober, let alone when they're hammered going into the through the gates of a creature stadium? I don't know. You know, there's plenty of stuff going around on the internet, as you can imagine, in Pittsburgh about this. This one of my favorite, more popular ones. Uh, if you can't see the visual visual, it's crossing out the a, C, and the R, and it says, I'm sure as hell not calling it that with a Heinz Field <laughs> logo <laughs> beneath that. Um, I thought that was extremely clever out of all the things, but people are pissed. And what I mean, people are legitimately pissed. And like you could, uh, I guess, understand. I mean, Heinz Field is iconic. And in an era right now where there's inflation in Heinz and Heinz, uh, Craft Tines probably isn't selling as much and having tr- trouble. It's an expensive deal. A naming rights contract, these are expensive five to 20 year contracts that they're paying out tens of millions of dollars each and every year. So like, I don't think people are necessarily mad about that. I think they uh, that news has kind of come out for a while that likely Heinz wasn't going to retain a, the naming rights. But in one of the, for one of the most famous franchises in all of sports in the entire world, it, this could have been so many other names, big company names, and this Acrashore comes out of nowhere, and people are like, what? And they're from where? Like, are you kidding me? Every other major stadium in this city has some sort of Pittsburgh-based company name. PNC Park. PNC Bank is a Pittsburgh-based company. Um, PPG Paints Arena. Okay? Pittsburgh Paint and Glass. You, there's the UPMC Center at Robert Morris. There's Highmark Stadium where the Riverhounds. It's all Pittsburgh-based companies. And this weirdo name that no one can pronounce or gives a shit about all of a sudden comes in. It's like, hey, guess what? Guess what, guys? We're here. We're putting our name on the building for 15 years. So get used to it. I, Not happy. I remember going to a playoff game with you, Dan. Um, wait, was it with you? Was it, were we at the game? playoff game where Tommy Maddox shit the bed? Tommy, yep, yep. Yeah, <laughs> and then people trashed his lawn. He was he played for the Steelers. He was a Steeler. He represented <laughs> our city. Uh, do you understand what's going to happen to that stadium when they put up whatever the creature sign is going to be on this? It is not going to. There were people taking pictures of the Heinz Field sign today so that they could get one of the last photos of it before it got taken. Like people here do not mess around with what happens to that football team, that stadium, and it's going to get vandalized. I promise you it's going to get vandalized. (laughs) It's not going to be good. Yeah. That first time, that first sign is not going to be the last sign (laughs) at a a creature (laughs) stadium. Um, But here's the thing I found, because this happened, it's so funny, in my, the two cities that I've lived the most time in, well, Wellsburg doesn't count, not exactly a city, but, you know, I love it. But, um, so, Pittsburgh and LA have both had these issues, and I've just looked at it like, this one makes more sense than 
Lakers fans and LA people being mad about Staples Center turning to crypto.com because like Staples isn't popping anymore. No one needs to go to Staples. <laughs> like we don't need to go to Staples anymore, but it made a lot of sense right. that Staples had the money to like put their name on this stadium in LA. Now it's crypto.com, which is whatever, but it's there. But neither one has anything to do with LA. The Pittsburgh thing, I get why people are angry because they want it to have PNC on it or UPMC or something like that. So like, I get it. But they said this deal was like $300 million. Yeah. $300 million. It's long. It's and a like, lot of money for a long time. Yeah. Uh, you know, this this goes back to like, this is even worse than it. Because what I thought when I saw that, I thought about like all those college football bowl games that are just ridiculous. Like, the tax slayer bowl and the Gasparilla bad boy mowers bowl. And like all the San Diego County credit union points set up. Like personal favorite. Yeah. Like what, what are we doing with these? But like, I remember them. Right. So I guess it works, but like insurance is a very, like, are they, are they trying to compete with like progressive and like Geico? <laughs> like I, what's happening? Like, I don't know. That's just, it's a, it's a very weird industry to invest in a stadium i feel i feel like it's just a ve- that's a very weird but it's gonna get i don't know it's gonna get mentioned on every nfl broadcast i i heard that like for a day that should have been one of the greatest days in pr for acrisure insurance turned into like their worst nightmare just because of how furious people are uh i mean i guess there is some sort of backstory connection now like don't get it wrong you go for the money when you offer up your naming rights to a stadium, you go for the money, right? It's profit. You go for the money. But at the same time, there's some sort of connection with a minority owner of the Steelers, like is a is a, own shares in like a parent company that invested in this insurance company or vice versa. There's uh-huh. some sort of like line that you can connect to this minority owner of the Steelers. And maybe he brought them to the table or like, you know, to think that they could actually do this, but now they still have to again pay millions and millions of dollars. It's not like they're giving them a deal because of that, but like that's the connection, I guess. But it could be Art, Art Rooney that has the connection to it. And people would be like, "We don't care. The name's dumb." <laughs> like it's that simple. So people are furious for good reason, and, and I am too. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. We have a for people that aren't familiar. There is a, a music venue out here in Pittsburgh that, when it was introduced, went by the name of Starlike, the pavilion at Starlike. And it has gone through constant name changes over the years, many, many, many. A lot of the naming rights deals were canceled, in fact, early and renamed things. It's not, but people for years have still called it Starlike. And I think we're going to have the same thing happen here. People are not going to stop calling that thing Heinz Field. It's the big ketchup bottle, as Chris Berman always calls it. And it should stay that way. And so Akershire really ain't going to get those money's worth. Yeah. here Here's my, I think my, I don't know if this is possible. Because it's Akershire Stadium, right? Yes. Yeah. That's what but, they've been saying. So. so why not just then sell naming rights to the field? So it could be like, Heinz Field at Akershire Stadium, and then everybody can just keep calling it what it actually is. <laughs> That's a lot. It's more <laughs> money. But see, they're not gonna. But see, Akershire is not gonna agree to that because Akershire wants Sunday Night Football to come swooping in after they do their montage of steel mills, and they go to the stadium and they say and they don't want it to say Heinz anywhere. They want we're here at Akershire Field or Akershire Stadium. That's what they want. So. A creature. I like that one. I'm going with that. A creature. It could have been so many other things, right? It could have been. Like so many. What should it That's... have been, guys? What should it have been? It, it could have been Icy Light Amphitheater. Uh, they could have named it that. <laughs> they could have named it, uh, I don't know, Post-Gazette Pavilion. They could have gone with First Niagara Pavilion. Um, shoot, I don't know. <laughs> There's so many other, yeah, there's so many other Pittsburgh based companies with millions and millions of dollars that could have thrown us around GNC ever heard of it. Yeah. Could have been them. Duolingo ever heard of them. Yeah. They're doing quite well right now. Duolipa. UPMC. <laughs> Duolipa also doing quite well. Duolipa <laughs> stadium. Let's go. Um, UPMC could have easily been them. 
Dick's Sporting Goods, headquartered in Pittsburgh. Where are you? I, they could call it Dick's Field for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> it would be better than this. It would be better than this. Uh, Amazon. How does Amazon not have stadium naming rights anywhere? And maybe they do, but I don't realize it. But again, you have a premier franchise in, the, in all of sports. And they have offices in Pittsburgh. A big operation in Pittsburgh. Amazon could have thrown their name in that stadium like it was nothing. Why didn't they do it? Free shipping. Every time they throw a touchdown, free shipping. Come on. Prime delivery. From Prime Kenny delivery. Pickett. Let's go. <laughs> That's big. That's big. Oh. I was like personally hoping that it would be another condiment brand. Like it would have been like <laughs> French's. Dude. It like should French's, have been French's like black because and yellow, the seats French's? are the same color. Yeah, the seats are the same color. French's mustard. The seats are yellow. No brainer. Come you on. Know? And then there's like always hunts. And then there's always the whole like if someone has hunts at the party, like people from Pittsburgh just like throw it away. And then that would have made them have to like be like, maybe ketchup doesn't taste that much different. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's hunts now. I was kind of hoping for that. Yeah. Right. So. You know, and then there's always like I wanted to kind of be like Kenny Chesney Field. Like no one would have oh. disagreed with that. Maybe you guys would have, but I know a lot of the city would have been like, "That's it. That's the name, <laughs> Kenny Chesney." You got money, dude. Put an investment group together and swoop in, Kenny That's Chesney true. Field. You'll have those naming rights every time there's a broadcast. Like you said, mm-hmm. that name will go up. Uh, Eaton Park. Where are you guys at? Eaton Park Stadium. You can Eaton Park and at. Like, come on. That's that's the one. I did think of one other one though. I had to get, go outside the box a little bit. You may be familiar with the uh, commode company, American Standard. I'm if you've ever been to the, the public, <laughs> the public restroom, if you've ever been to a public restroom, you've probably seen that little American Standard on there. Two reasons, okay? American Standard. Mike Tom, one of Mike Tomlin's well-known phrases that is plastered in steel inside that stadium is the standard is the standard. That's way too easy. <laughs> and. You want opponent, opponents to be so scared when they come into American Standard Stadium that they shit their pants and you flush it down the American Standard Stadium. Where are you, American Standard? Too easy. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Everybody needs a toilet, right? I mean, they got to be doing great business. Who's their competitor? Yep. Name me one other toilet company. Who are they competing with? They have to have a monopoly on this shit, so they, have the, they got the money. Name another toilet company. Go. You can't. You can't. <laughs> yeah. I'm legit crying over here. <laughs> this episode's gone Blown off the rails. Opportunity. Blown <laughs> opportunity. Big time. Oh my God. Every well, time they like the, the defense makes a stop on fourth down, and it's like flush. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, yeah. That's got so potential. many ideas. <gasps> So, oh, so many ideas. My God. My God. All right. First um, and second down sponsored by American Standard. <laughs> number one and number two. <laughs> <laughs> would they replace the ketchup bottles with like toilets? Because you know how they would pour the ketchup down onto the Yeah, screen? or the little flushing valve. It'd be like a flushable like, valve. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh, this is the one. I don't know. And now I'm thinking of the gateway clipper boats just pulling up to a big toilet. <laughs> yeah, right. Dropping people off at the stadium. We're at the big toilet here on the three at the confine <laughs> of the three rivers in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Let's drop the kids off at the pool. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, I can't wait to visit a creature stadium or American Standard Stadium, which is what I may now call it. So, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. I was going to do uh, our other topic here uh, movies that should be restaurants. Um, because Bubba Gum Shrimp, I passed one a few months ago now. And I was like, why aren't there more movies that are restaurants, should be restaurant chains? So, I have a couple here and okay. uh, I'll be quick. Um, I think there should be a restaurant called the shelter from eight mile okay <laughs> the shelter and it is rap battle dinner theater oh yeah so it's okay. just like going to medieval times but <laughs> it's rap battle dinner 
theater. So you get to go through like the the whole battle sequence in Eight Mile, but it's all done in very Broadway production. It's dinner, rap battle, dinner theater, Eight Mile, the shelter. And like each battle, each one is like first course, second course, third course. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like in your section based on, yeah, your teams and everything like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Just like medieval times. And my other one I have is there should be a restaurant uh, named after Titanic just so everyone gets hit by the iceberg dessert at the end of every meal. That's unbelievable. (laughs) That that, is unbelievable because I had Titanic on my list as well. But... (laughs) The way I framed it was like, you go there to, you don't go there to be clear. You don't die. Okay. (laughs) But like the point of eating at this restaurant is to have whatever you would want your last meal on earth to be. You have it at Titanic. Okay. Well, we're partners. Let's do it. I'll be honest. I thought of Titanic a lot and I couldn't think of like a non- like messed up theme. <laughs> like I was just like, still kind of too soon. I don't know. I can't think of a way to do it, but that's a good way to do it. I like it. You get your last meal and then you get hit by an iceberg at the end. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. Can I have the Jack don't let go? Is that still available? <laughs> <laughs> that's part of their uh, frozen drinks menu. Is what. <laughs> too soon is that too soon (laughs) oh man i like it um i didn't have like any special criteria as i put these together (laughs) one one that i came up with i just gave i just said that heinz field should be american standard stadium so please (laughs) we're far past that (laughs) that's true that is that is thank you dan that makes me feel better about my list um one other one that i have i have a few more but one, it just came to my mind that like, I don't know if you guys know this, but in the movie Ocean's Eleven, Brad Pitt is eating food in every single scene that he's in. Like he, he's, he's actually at some point in every scene eating something. And that made me think there should be like an Ocean's Eleven themed restaurant but it should it would be perfect because it could be in vegas because that movie is all about vegas it can have all the very vegasy things that you would want it to but then like something like i remember going uh dan you were with me at this we went to like and when we were in chicago we went to like a mob themed restaurant remember where it was like gangsters and stuff like that yeah 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 so like maybe this oceans 11 themed restaurant has some type of vibe like that like there is like performances that happen where it's like almost like you know scheming to rob a casino or something like that but that was inspired by the fact that brad pitt is always eating in that movie interesting call out didn't realize that i can kind of see it now i see him eating a lot yeah he's always but wow wow okay um the first one that came to mind i think is already a restaurant or was at some point haven't we seen the good good burger restaurant did that actually happen I don't know if it, I think, I think they've done like little pop-up things where they just like made a restaurant that for a day, but like, right. Yeah. Okay. That was the first one that came to mind and that, you know, whole movies based off of a restaurant, um, back to the future. One of DD's favorite movies. Um, (laughs) I think there's so many things that you can do with this. I mean, think about what they did from 1989 looking into the future and how like cool that was if you could do that now or like what they did when they went to the year 2015 they had the popular restaurant there was the cafe 80s and it was all like throwback stuff so i think you could do that type of thing too uh what about pizza planet from the movie toy story ah that's a good yeah that's a I wonder if that does exist, like an art, a pizza arcade called Pizza Plant. That's a really good idea. I don't. Maybe it does, but I don't think it does. I like, don't. I've never heard of it. If I it don't does. think it does. Yeah, there's not enough. All the major pizza chains are the same, and they're boring. And most of them don't have restaurants, right? Even the Pizza Huts are going out of style. But you get Pizza Planet up and running. I don't know. It's still clientele based built up there. Um, I got a couple more. Again, 
didn't put a whole lot, there's not a whole lot of structure to these. Um, <laughs> from Super Troopers, shenanigans. That place with all the shit on the walls. <laughs> it's that simple. Why is that place with all the shit all over the walls? Oh, you mean oh, shenanigans? Shenanigans. <laughs> um, I thought finding Nemo. I thought I thought finding Nemo. I thought could you, that could just be a seafood restaurant, but that might be a little rough. I don't know if that's a. <laughs> Like, you know, aquariums and stuff like that everywhere, but then it's just like a seafood menu and it's just a little, I, you know, so I wasn't sure. I haven't ironed out those details quite yet. Might be a little rough for the kids. Yeah, that would um, be real rough for the kids. Yeah, not a kid-friendly restaurant. But it uh, could be like a lobster, see, wait, you know how like at, okay. um, do they still do this at restaurants? Like where they have the lobster in the tank and like you can like pick it? Yeah. Maybe like yeah. that's the Finding Nemo or the Finding Dory. And you yeah. could like, you I know, want you, Dory. You, you, you pick go. the fish you want. You find your fish okay. at the restaurant. You're like, I Finding, want. yeah. Okay. See, all right. Working this <laughs> out. I'm loving it. I don't know. We got guys. investors. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the other, the last two I have, um, the movie Big with Tom Hanks. And all the portions are just big. <laughs> big portions and you eat like you are like a teenager like when a teen when you were a teenager they used to eat big portions that's kind of what happens to him just big everything's just big <laughs> it's it's a movie big the food's big the restaurant's big <laughs> big the drinks are big <laughs> <laughs> i am seeing it though like you because I, I, now i'm thinking about how he like you know got that apartment and he had like all kinds of kids stuff in his apartment like i'm thinking like you sit down at a table and chairs that are like way too big for you Everything's big. Yeah. Everything's big. Right? Big. Oh, big. I love this podcast. I didn't say I didn't say uh big dick steakhouse. Remember, keep in mind I didn't say that we don't have that movie. Hey, yet, hey, 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 hey. TM, TM, TM. <laughs> um the last one I came up with is the movie Blank Check. And the restaurant is just looks like this huge mansion. There's water slides. There's outdoor seating. There's huge screens. It just looks like the house that that kid bought <laughs> in blank check. And you just feel like you're in this like huge, huge, richy, richy, like, again, screens everywhere and games and slides, big party atmosphere with blank check. So that's the other one I came up with. And maybe, maybe you get to hit on a woman who's 30 years older than you while you're there. Hey, everything's on the table. That movie would not fly today. <laughs> Love that movie, though. Uh, I have two more. I'll do them real quick. Uh, I mentioned this movie earlier, the movie Waiting. Um, I think that could be basically like a Chili's or Applebee's, but like the entire staff is a dick to you the entire time you eat. Uh, so that's one. <laughs> and then this is kind of on the theme of like medieval times, but like, the, uh, is there a Beauty and the Beast restaurant? Because like Be Our Guest is made for this, right? You sit down in like a castle, hmm. enchanted castle themed restaurant. And then like your servers are, you know, all of the characters. Teacups. They sing to you. Yeah. Yeah. They give you a teacup. You talk to it. You know. There is Animals. a Beauty and the Beast restaurant at Disney World. There you go. That okay. does all those things. Franchise it. But yeah, it needs to be franchised though. That's the thing. So many of these things, it's like they've been one place at one time or one here at this time but like my last one i had you mentioned it you said good burger i wanted there to be a mondo burger because as cool as good burger is mondo burger was doing really crazy shit so like <laughs> i wanted there to be a mondo burger somewhere not a good burger like yeah good burger just look normal and like yeah ed and all that and they're funny but like mondo burger come on come on and then just yeah. waiters yeah. just screaming like you're going to the grinder you just come on. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Good ideas. TM on all of them, by the way. I, seriously, this was this was a very great. This is a great conversation. We've got got some good restaurant ideas. All right, brunch Dang. court. Dan, what you got? All right, let's go. We'll go through brunch court quickly here. It's been a little while since we've had brunch court, so welcome to the return, uh, Chris. Let's start off with Starbucks. If you could throw up the Starbucks image on the screen here. Now, this isn't necessarily crazy outside of the box, but gentlemen. It is July, which means we are not that far oh. from fall, and we have our first new fall Jesus item up for bid here today. Starbucks, thank you very much. They've come out with their nitro cold brew in a can. They've done that. They did that the past couple of years, but now we have, wait for it, the pumpkin cream nitro cold, blue, cold brew 
in a can coming out this year. I cannot wait. I had to share this with the people because this is when the pumpkin stuff starts coming around. We haven't seen it come out yet, but this is when we start to bring it up on brunch court. And this one just got me super, super excited. So pumpkin fans rejoice Starbucks nitro cold brew coming your way in a can. Dan, are you one of those people that like it's July and you're already stocking up on Halloween candy? Uh, no, I no. In fact, somebody brought up Halloween the other day and I was like, hold your freaking horses. I'm enjoying summer right now. Well, that's how um, I feel about this. It's just a little too yeah. early. It's a little too early. Okay. I'm sure that this is, this sounds like a great idea. I'm sure. People will love it. Uh, it's a very small can 9.6 fluid ounces. That's a strange Ooh, good size. Call good, good catch Ooh. there. I didn't notice that. I saw it was 80 calories. I was like, holy shit, 80 calories. And then I saw, okay, that's a small. Oh, that's why. (laughs) Um, I'm sure it's great, but it's similar to the Titanic. It's too soon. It's too soon. But wait, this is out now? (laughs) No, it's not out now. They just, they're announced, they unveiled the plan for it. So it's not out now, but I had to share it now because. Okay. Ah, okay. 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 I have no problem with this. I'm not a pumpkin spice fan or pumpkin cream, all that stuff, but yes because like i have ordered many pumpkin cream cold brews for my wife and so yeah she'll absolutely love this and so will everybody but i was just nervous that it was coming out today because i'm like you guys keep pushing yeah. this shit up every year and it's like guys <laughs> summer doesn't end until the freaking until end of september like stop mm-hmm. with your pumpkin shit just wait yeah i'm sure we'll see it at the end of august early september don't have the exact date but uh That'll keep the, the line down at the Starbucks in the fall, hopefully, if people just p- pick it up at a retail spot. So there's your good news. <laughs> there's your good news there. Uh, next item up for bid, let's go with the potato chips. Let's go with the potato chips, Chris. This is uh, new from Lay's. This is Lay's, follow me now, kettle cooked Fritos chili cheese flavored chips. Now, of course, Frito Lay is the same company. But this is a Fritos chili cheese flavored kettle cooked Lay's chipped. Am I overthinking? Are they overthinking the phrasing here? I just want to know what you get, your instinct, your initial thoughts are as to what what's the goal here. Oh, as to what's the goal? <laughs> what's what's what are we what are we trying to get? What are we trying to get? I'm sure this tastes good. I think the problem is you couldn't fit this name into a tweet. it's like kcfcc (laughs) yeah i think this is i think this is great like i'm all for this i'm not the biggest fan of the kettle cooked chips but like chili cheese you can't go wrong with this this can't be bad it just can't i mean i yeah, I, I guess the idea is that chili cheese, it's like that you're typically having that with Fritos, whether it's, you know, in a layered dip or you're using it for um, like a walking taco, something like that. But that's just what throws this whole thing off. Is this potato chip supposed to taste like a Frito? <laughs> then what is it a potato chip still? Because it's not a Frito. It's a kettle cooked potato chip, but it's Fritos chili cheese flavored. That's what's confusing. That's what's confusing. Unless there's a Fritos chili cheese dip, which is a whole nother problem. But this one just confused me. I had to share this with you guys because I'm a little confused. I think it will taste good, but it's a little it's a little confusing to me. Yeah, I don't know. Sounds like Dan's gonna have to do a, Dan's gonna have to do a blind taste test. I think. Yeah, we got to get yeah, you a great. blind taste test on this one. Great, can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> Uh, now the last one, we're back to our beverage category. Uh, Coca-Cola has teamed up with our boy marshmallow for limited edition marshmallow, not flavored Coca-Cola. Okay. Not flavor, not marshmallow flavored, but the artist marshmallow and it's watermelon strawberry flavored Coca-Cola. Very cool can art but why in the holy hell wouldn't this be a marshmallow flavored coca-cola yeah that's stupid i say i'm (laughs) what were the what you said strawberry what watermelon 
yeah, okay. I'm sure that tastes good. But like, no, I vote no, because this is stupid. If your name is Marshmallow, <laughs> you don't have a choice on the flavor. <laughs> yep. This is really stupid for another reason, not just marshmallow and the flavor. Marshmallow's head looks like a sugar cube. Marshmallow is an EDM <laughs> DJ. Do you think his crowds get hype off of no sugar? This is so stupid <laughs> and off brand. I'm sorry. I hate this. Like, I love marshmallow, but I love Coca Cola. Th this is dumb. This is really stupid. Like, go back into the lab and like fix your mistakes. Yeah, there's, there's, it should be extra sugar version, not zero sugar version. Um, it makes no sense whatsoever. And I feel like, honestly, a marshmallow flavored Coca-Cola could probably work. I think it would actually probably taste good. Would it have an a, absurd amount of sugar in it? Absolutely. freaking lutely But watermelon <laughs> sugar, or what? my Harry Styles, watermelon strawberry. <laughs> ha! Ha! Um, <laughs> I, I don't I just I don't get it. I think you're gonna confuse a lot of people too because the can is white and it, and says, it says marshmallow on it. It says marshmallow at the top and then at the very bottom it says oh, watermelon <laughs> strawberry flavored. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. It's false advertising and it's stupid. Stupid. Real stupid. All right. Thumbs down from all of us. That doesn't happen very us very much, but I'm glad you guys feel the same way because I was perplexed when I saw that and, and had to share. So that was the return of Brunch Court. Can't wait to try all of those and hate myself later for it. You don't have a choice. It's that simple. <laughs> you don't have a choice. Like, sorry, you put marshmallow in your name. Chris is 100% right. <laughs> It's all true. right well let's get into what we're listening to boys that end this thing all right chris what you listen to man uh my first one for today is from a band i've i've featured before their name is magnolia park and uh they put out a song at the end of last week after record we recorded called don't be racist and i'm gonna put it on the playlist this week because it's a really good song and just don't be racist <laughs> oh, that's that's a solid thing to say. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Dan, what are you listening to? You're gonna love the lyrics in that one. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, like let's go. They're a um, legitimately good pop punk band. Like the song is legitimately catchy. But yeah, check it out. Nice on the sounds of brunch. Nice. Uh, first one up for me is the return of DNCE. Let's freaking go. Speaking of marshmallow. Um, they came out with a new song last week called Got Me Good. And this song got me good. It really did. <laughs> Hello. Uh, very summery, dancey, catchy little bop there. Um, glad they got back together uh, amidst all like the Joe Jonas Brothers like reunion success and everything like that. Glad to see uh, uh, Joe Jonas and DNC kind of getting back together for a couple of songs this year. And I guess they're expecting more later. So get in the car. Get those windows down and crank Got Me Good by DNC. I like it. Crank it on um, your way to Creature Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> A Creature Stadium? Kenny Chesney Field. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Um, there is this band named Sundial. Um, they've got some interesting, uh, I don't know, it feels like early 2000s just fits right in with all of the the pop punk revival, the pop rock revival that's going on and stuff like that. And um, yeah, 24 is the song and it's really good. And they have a song that's coming out soon. And this is how I saw them because a bunch of people I've seen like sharing the song that like they've been teasing on TikTok and stuff. And that song sounds like it's going to be amazing too. But this song, really good. Uh, 24 by Sundial. Check it out. Nice. Cool. Uh, Dan, when was your bachelor party? Oof. Feels like um, Mar um, end of March, beginning of May, or uh, beginning of April. Sorry, end of March, beginning of April. Yeah, <laughs> really long. <laughs> it was, it was Remember month. that month long trip? <laughs> like a few days. I um. Okay, so I, I think because of your bachelor party, like I totally missed the fact that Machine Gun Kelly put out an album. I didn't like it was <laughs> at the exact same time. 
Um, so I dove back into yeah. it and listened to it and like, it's good. It's catchy. I'll put something on the playlist from it this week because I just discovered it. Um, but I think like one of the disconnects I have with this new wave of pop punk is a lot of it is like really depressing. <laughs> like, like this album is like, I don't remember simple plan and blink 182 singing about suicide and like every other song. So it kind of bums me out. <laughs> this album kind of bums me out. Um, but the music, like the musicianship is good. So I'll put something on this week. That's the other thing is a lot of those songs are upbeat and you don't necessarily notice it, right? Until you're like really listening to the lyrics, you're like, oh, already, okay. Um, And another reason you probably didn't realize that he put out another album is because he put one out like last year. Yeah, (laughs) He's just like, whoop, got another one, whoop, got another one. It's like, oh, okay, just more of this. All right, he's just playing catch up on that whole, ever since that genre swish for him. Um, Probably have another one later this year, early next year. Yeah. No, I hear you, Chris. Um, that new Ian Dior song that I really like, I forget what the hell it's called, but like the first line that he talks about killing himself. It's the first line in the song. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, woo. Yeah, I'm like, Shit. wild. All right. Yeah. Uh, next one up for me is a collab because you know I love a good collab. Uh, this time with a Japanese kind of alt rock pop, pop punk band uh, named Chai, C H A I in all caps. And they teamed up with the Virgin group Super Organism, who might ring a bell. They've been on the playlist a couple of times from me in the past. Uh, Everybody Wants to Be Famous, I think, was the first song I put on from them a couple of years ago. But it, it's it's got a little bit of unique sound to it. It's like a new age digital synth pop vibe because it is uh, a band from Japan meeting Super Organism. So their styles are very unique, but... They blend really well together in this song. So you got to listen to it all the way through. The vocals at first kind of might throw you off, but, um, you know, the lead singer from Super Organism, she's super talented. I love the way that uh, her vocals come across. So the song is called Hero Journey from Chai and Super Organism. Claire Rosencrantz, one of my favorites. She's got a new song out. I'm too pretty for this. Jam. It's all yep. I got. It's just yep. jam. Jam. Yep. Nice. <laughs> um, Confirmed. <laughs> to uh, to pivot from like the depressing pop punk, I want to throw it back to a song that could have been unbelievably depressing, but like given the era of pop punk that it came out of early 2000s, it wasn't. Uh, Hit the lights. I just had them on the playlist like a week or two ago. Uh, their song Body Bag. Listen to that. Oh. Listen to that song. And it's like, <laughs> it's like upbeat about the fact that they're going to kick your ass. Like it's, it's that, that's what I'm looking for, for all these new, new pop punk artists. That's what I'm looking for. That's an all time great song. Yeah. That's whew, so good. So good. <laughs> uh, last one for me, uh, pale waves came out with a new single off their upcoming album due out in a couple of weeks, I think maybe in August, um, they're an uh, you know alternative rock group. If you you may or may not be familiar with Pale, Pale Waves, they've been around for a little while, and their new song is called Jealousy, and it's actually a song about having a little bit of jealousy being a good thing, like in a relationship, like a healthy amount of jealousy. So it's an interesting twist on it, and with the style and the sound of uh, a lot of music today. So I really dig it. Can't wait for that whole album. So Jealousy by Pale Waves. Sweet. Well, my last one I saw uh, on the end of a TV show, and I don't even remember what TV show I was watching at this point because I've just been watching random things on hotel rooms. And this song, it came out in 2018. Uh, I never heard it before by an artist named You Know, and it's called No Going Back. And apparently, it was it was at least a critic darling in 2018 because it's on like every end of year 2018 playlist. Like it's just there. Huh. And I have no idea who this person is. All I know is this song is really good. And I listened to the rest of their EP and I didn't really like it. So this song (laughs) is really freaking good, though. It's called No Going Back. (laughs) Check it out. All right. (laughs) Good deep find. I love it. Yeah. Well, check out the Sounds of Birds playlist on Spotify. Uh, It's got all the songs on it from the last two weeks, which is pretty great. And uh, guys, this is the end of the Brunch Breakdown. Any final thoughts? I think there's potential for some type of 
new age grocery store with a DJ and it's like a party that makes you want to shop for longer and buy more groceries. And I wow. think, Ooh. I think this combination of people hang on can get it done. This is very, you, you can't end the podcast this way. <laughs> oh, oh yes. Yes, we can. We're ending the podcast with this. Cause we are coming back to it next week. Cause we're, <laughs> there you go. cause we're, cause we have to have a board meeting immediately after this to discuss <laughs> this idea. That's why. <laughs> and that's why we love the breath breakdown. We're out. <laughs>